Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Science Thursday. In today's episode, we're gonna take a closer look at pole mounted substation or miniature substation. So let's dive right into it. Now, if you have been following my series, you must have understood that I've already covered substation. Then why do we need pole mounted substation? You have to understand, you don't live next to a substation. That's the biggest problem. Not everybody has like, okay, there's a substation next to me. You may, many of you may not even seen a substation, uh, you know, close by because they are generally built outside of the city. So since we are not living next to a substation, that creates a problem. How do we get uh, efficient transmission of electricity next to you? Now, home voltage, basically the voltage that you are using, is not high enough as in it is generally below 220 volts or 240 volts generally it's always below that so in those sort of scenarios the problem becomes the ampere would be always high either they have to make very 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 thick cable coming from your basically substation to your home or they have to figure out a miniature substation and you have to understand when you have a neighborhood basically multiple home the current draw can be very high in terms of total watt consumption you can have a scenario where you have half megawatt being consumed in a like small neighborhood so in those sort of scenario you have a you have to have an efficient way of transmitting power from your big substations basically you have these substations that are working on hundreds of kilovolt and you want to figure out a way to deliver this safely this is crucial aspect deliver it safely to your consumer so that is why we need miniature substation now now, what is the solution of our solution is basically high voltage or in terms of electricity we call it medium voltage generally 11,000 kV now that's the maximum limit in your country it may be 9,000 in some other place it may be 7,000 but generally it's upwards of 11 kV now why 11 kV why not 33 kV why not 100 kV you have to understand air has a limitation basically if you have two conductors that are exposed and they are carrying electricity or let's say one is neutral and one is carrying uh, electricity there is a certain limit like let's say the voltage on this conductor live conductor goes up 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 the electricity will simply jump it will not care whether there is air gap or not it will simply jump to make sure that electricity cannot jump and randomly short out things we have to create what we call air gap so if you see the high voltage line they are generally separate so in 11 kV you have to be keep them let's say one feet apart uh, that's okay but when you are talking about let's say 135 kV you have to keep them like you have to make sure the nearest conductor where it, the electricity can jump must be bare minimum of two to three meters apart or like uh, 10 feet apart so that's why you see giant poles carrying uh, you know 100 plus kV so that is infeasible for uh, basically your neighborhood so for neighborhood 11 kV is like a good compromise basically if the voltage is not so low that ampere would be too high and it's safe enough as in the air's dielectric strength basically air's ability to stop the electricity jumping from one point to another it's high enough and you have to also understand it also must take into consideration rain because we cannot afford to put uh, sheathing basically insulation on, on these lines it would be way too expensive so with all that consideration is the voltage uh, basically high enough to reduce amperage is uh, like you know that voltage is manageable by air in a wet environment in a rainy situation yes then we settle down on 11 kV and it also means how high you have to keep it you have to make sure because if giant metal truck starts to garbage truck starts to go below a conductor electricity should not get excited and jump on it so 11 kV has been uh, chosen for that and there are certain benefits of that 11 kV is not too damn high so the transformers that we need to uh, step down that 11 kV to whatever you need it's not that big nor expensive so this is why we built this miniature substation that is on a pole so that's the idea you reduce the voltage as much as you can to make sure the air can handle it your exposed conductor can handle it, your pole does not become ludicrously expensive and then we created a small cheap transformers to run on it so how the heck this works now there are fancy ways to understand it and there are simplified way this is a simplified way you have high voltage side basically the thing that is generally on top that's all you have to do. sometimes it can come uh, through underground but you will always see the conductors basically whatever part that is carrying current will be ex spread out basically they will always make sure that two high voltage conductor never come very close to each other they will always make sure it's far apart so that's the easiest way you can tell oh this is high voltage or low voltage low voltage could be this close and high voltage will be always they will make sure that it's far apart so that's the high voltage side. that's the first that's the incoming that is coming from your nearest substation then it's taken care of for safety now safety is generally done by multiple layers so you can have what we call lightning arrester 
then you have safety taken care of then the, after safety it goes to a transformer basically this is what is selling electricity to you this is the final transformer before the electricity reaches to you so understand the electricity from a dam from a coal-fired power plant from a nuclear power plant uh, after many st uh, stages like uh, generally they, those transformers work on uh, transformer I'm saying those generators generally make very high voltage by default they generally 2000 volt or 5000 volts by default and then they go to another step of transformer where they go up to as high as uh, 130 kV or sometimes 800 kV then they trans transfer to you know nearest substation then this is the last step down transformer from this it is a common thing basically here you can plug your mobile charger if you want to safely you won't blow it up or yourself up so this is the final distribution stage so this is how it works you have high voltage you have basically safety mechanism you have transformer and you have distribution how do you find out which is high voltage basically either would be on up or whichever conductor that's carrying high voltage would be either very uh, like you know very spread out to make sure that it can uh, not short circuit so we handle safety on a very simple level basically because we don't have infinite money we generally first thing we do is put these puppies these are what we call lightning arrestors so if lightning for, uh, falls on your conductor because it's a big giant metal object which will attract electricity it uh, routes this to ground basically it uh, earths it safely to make sure that your electricity does not go offline your transformer does not catch on fire this is the first line of defense however you also have to understand even though these are lightning arrestor they also sometimes acts as a surge arrestor so let's say in substations some fault occurred and they are opening the switch or closing the circuit breakers some of those time it also releases a very very high voltage spike this also acts as a double duty basically this can also act as a makeshift surge arrestor and on top of that then we come down to like this is the first line of defense then we come to fuse uh, and isolator now isolator simply means you are pulling the plug now you have to understand this is a combo unit so in your substation these two will be completely different you will have a fuse controlled by a circuit breaker and you will have isolator completely independent. here we don't have the money so we generally rely on this now if you see this rod what they do is basically they explode now they explode internally you will not see the explosion you will hear the bang but you will not see it the, that's the whole idea it's a hollow conductor made sure to not conductor i would say hollow ceramic tube that can handle the blast and it falls basically and let's say somebody has to work on transfer but everything is okay you see the ring uh, basically ring on that fuse they will pull that down this also acts as a basically isolator this way they can safely de-energize the electricity so this is pulling a combo duty it's also allowing you to like de-plug it and it also acts a fuse combo unit and then you have to understand why the heck we put fuses on uh, basically high voltage why we are putting fuses on like 11 kv line when we can buy fuse for 200 or 240 volts so you have to understand on these puppy basically which is uh, powering a transformer the amperes uh, are what affects the fuse now ampere rating you want to be keep keep low otherwise your fuse will be very expensive to basically compensate for that we generally put it on high voltage side and we figure out how to manage the voltage because higher ampere is very hard to uh, you know handle because it melts things high voltage you have to just make sure it's far apart so that's why we put high voltage uh, and uh, you know fuses that's why we are not going for high voltage uh, low voltage fuses because even though those are cheap and you can buy it uh, like in your local store if you go there and ask like hey i want 600 ampere fuse they will like they will look at you like what what do you want these fuses they are barely rated for 10 20 you know ampere so this is how we take care of the safety aspect now after the safety we get down to the business which is voltage transfer now the voltage transfer you can have a single uh, phase transfer which will be generally 11 kV to 220 volt then you can have a three phase arm, something like this which will do like uh, 11 kV to 440 volt now do understand that 440 volt does not mean like each of the phase in the transformer is 440 volt that simply means 220 but you can measure it basically uh, if let's say from phase A to from uh, phase B you can have a scenario where the voltage basically the potential could be uh, 440 volt because one phase will be in positive another would be in negative so the gap between them is upwards of 440 volt that's why these are rated at 400 volts three phase you do understand that every phase is still uh, 220 volt so these are the two main types of transfer generally you will always see something like this 11 kV to 440 volts now up for rating in terms of how much power it can carry it's generally rated below 500 kVA now if you watch there are generally steel plates uh, etched onto the sometime etched onto bolted onto or like uh, you know welded onto the transformer you can easily read it now if you read it you will always find it they always mention their load in terms of kVA basically kilo volt ampere now you have to understand this this kVA is upper limit 
that means upwards of 500 kilowatt can be drawn from it now you might be wondering why the heck we don't simply say 500 kilowatt it's a transformer it's supposed to provide power why don't we say power that we understand oh my, my motor is like 10 kilowatt my motor is all that the reason is power factor now, that's a completely complicated system don't worry too much about it basically if you have good power factor uh, closer to one awesome you will can you can draw upwards of 500 kilowatt but if your power factor is bad which generally it's bad but let's say you are running computer computer have a bridge rectifier in your power supply that messes up the power factor so power becomes like 0.7 so that 0.7 gets multiplied for that reason you can never draw as much current as you want your practical current draw would be limited that's why transformer always is rated in kva now kva at simplest conversion would be like theoretical maximum is 500 kilowatt now safe assumption is generally below 30 percent you have to reduce it by 300 percent now if you are running in a big building or uh, something like a colony there uh, there would be people who invested a lot of what we call power factor correctors these will uh, correct that and then they will allow in the same transformer they can get up upwards of 500 kilowatt so that's the rating aspect now you have to also understand when you see uh, these transformers you will notice only three high voltage lines are coming how the heck i'm getting four lines out of it like transformer is generally uh, in all the schematics you see about transformer two wire come in two wire going out how the heck we have a scenario where three wire comes in and four wire comes out you have three high voltage line how the heck you're getting neutral now that is being accomplished by what we call uh, delta y connection so delta is generally the primary basically this is where your high voltage is coming in it's connected like a delta so it only has three point now then how your it's converted to basically the step down side is generally what we call uh, y configuration in y you can see there are four points so in the center point it acts as a neutral because the voltage there is zero now this neutral is shorted to the ground basically they put it to ground the reason why it's there because if you have neutral from your home it's supposed to go here it's, it's not supposed to go to your ground it's supposed to go here this will cancel out the voltage any unbalance it will cancel it out and if there is any over voltage or any short circuit then it will ground it so this is how you get three input and four output you have three high voltage coming in and that's connected in a, like coils inside is connected in what we call delta configuration and then you have y configuration as an output and the y gives you one extra neutral conductor so that's the aspect of the transformer now there are certain extra add-ons that you can see around sometimes you can see mccb basically it's a bigger brother of mcb miniature circuit breaker but these are designed for very very high amperage because i already told you if you want to go somewhere and ask them for 500 ampere fuse it's very expensive so generally mccb it's a newer development it's not that it did not used to exist it was very expensive now it's cheap so uh, like this is a transformer near me basically you have a transformer and there is a big gray box that has this mccb now on top uh, below that once the output comes here it is low voltage this goes to into distribution box from this distribution box uh, there is a metering also on that the reason why we want to do meter here this uh, two reason first if somebody steals electricity the collection agency will find out hey my collection does not add up to how much electricity was spent here or let's say they figure out everybody is like you know using electricity paying the bill that means there is electrical loss or short circuit somewhere along the line for that reason we also want to do monitoring here and some uh, advanced electrical grid also put smart equipments here so which is basically uh, allowing them to figure out the temperature humidity and all, all those other things that will help them manage this power situation very effectively so these are the extra add-ons these are not guaranteed that you're going to find in the substation and uh, mccb is ki kind of rare because it's a very new kind of investment distribution box you may have a simple three line if it's going to a big uh, basically uh, community building you will just have one three uh, three line system going if you have like one transformer taking care of five six homes then you will say distribution box electric meter again it may be there may not be there so these are the extra add-ons that we add on to it so this was my presentation on pole substations. I hope you liked it or learned from it. In that case, please leave the like and uh, click the ad shown in this video. That will directly help me. If you didn't like it, don't worry about it. You can dislike it. Press the dislike button twice to show me your extra disappointment. And I would urge you to leave a comment because I reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.